This video will discuss the Metropolis Monte Carlo algorithm for computing average properties in molecular simulations. So we mentioned in our previous video on Monte Carlo that Monte Carlo methods are not biased towards any particular uh, configuration. All configurations, if you're just randomly displacing or randomly choosing coordinates, are pretty much equally likely. And most structures in our simulation don't contribute to average properties. The structures that contribute most strongly to the average energy, average bond lengths, average positions, all those sorts of things, are structures which are low energy, which are much more likely to be observed for the system. They have higher probabilities <coughs> because they have larger Boltzmann factors. So what we wanted is a Monte Carlo method which is biased towards low energy structures. And that method is called Metropolis Monte Carlo. So since most of these structures don't contribute to the properties, whenever your energy is much greater than KT, your probability is going to zero. We have this modified Monte Carlo algorithm, which we will use to simulate our systems. All right, so the steps here in this algorithm would be assign the initial geometry of the system. Just as you always have to do, you need some type of input to guess what the coordinates of the system are, whether that's drawing the molecule in Avogadro, downloading a PDB file, what have you, whatever it is. Um, so then the next step would be to randomly perturb the coordinates. So the next iteration's coordinates equal the current iteration's coordinates plus some random displacement vector, oftentimes just a vector of random numbers in some type of magnitude you have selected. Next we compute the energy of this of these new coordinates and if the energy of the new coordinates is less than the energy of the old coordinates then we accept the new structure. The new structure is now our coordinates. If the energy is higher than the previous energy then what we have to do is choose a random number a which is between 0 and 1 and if the relative Boltzmann factor, so the e to the negative difference in energy over kt, if that value is greater than our random number, then we accept the new configuration. Otherwise, we reject the new configuration and keep our old one. So this is, preferring, this is biasing us towards low energy structures because we automatically accept if the energy went down. But we can still do some exploration of our surface because we can go higher in energy, but the higher in energy we go, the less likely we are to accept that change. So if, if the energy is 1 kT higher than the previous iteration, then we have about a 30% chance of accepting. If it's 2 kT, it's about 10%. And by the time you get to 10 kT, the, you know, it's like 1 to the, 1 to the minus 3%. So the, the probability of accepting goes down very quickly, but you can still occasionally accept high energy results. And that helps you to move around on the surface away from whatever local minimum you're near. And the higher the temperature is, the more likely you are to accept a higher energy configuration, because that means your Boltzmann factors are all going to start getting get bigger at higher energies. So then we're going to repeat this until we reach a desired number of trials, and then we'll average our properties over all of the given configurations that we have. Additionally, every so often, um, this will be every 100, uh, every 100 configurations in my Monte Carlo program I've written, we're going to adjust the magnitude of this random displacement vector such that we accept about 50% of our trials. So if we're accepting all of our trials, that means our displacement isn't big enough. We could be pushing further away and exploring more of the surface with fewer trials. If our acceptance is too low, then we're dis displacing it too big. We're exploring too many high energy structures, and we need to try to get to where we're going to more efficiently uh, get through some structures there. So this can get around what we call the multiple minima problem in the fact that if you just do an optimization, uh, steepest descent or conjugate gradient, as I mentioned earlier in this chapter, you're just going to converge to a local minimum. Whereas this Metropolis Monte Carlo, as long as your temperature isn't too low, is able to get over these uh, high energy regions and occasionally explore over them and get to different uh, low energy structures. 
So this is not a trajectory like you get in molecular dynamics. Molecular dynamics, the previous video we showed for ethane, how um, that's just kind of a smooth trajectory of all the vibrations of the molecule over time. Monte Carlo, since the displacement is random, it's not based off of, you know, Newton's second law. What you get is just a jagged path of structures from uh, one configuration to another. So unlike molecular dynamics, there's no time variable. You just have the integer number of trials that you have done thus far. So on to some examples. So again, my GitHub computational chemistry repository. If you look in the data Monte Carlo or MC directory, we have the results of some Monte Carlo simulations there. So I have the mc.py uh, program down in the scripts molecular mechanics directory, and it's going to act on the input mche20.mc file. So that is this. We're going to run this on a file of 20 helium atoms at 298 Kelvin inside a sphere that's about 47 angstroms on each side. That's about the size of a sphere that would include uh, 20 helium atoms if they were about one atmosphere of pressure. We're going to do this for 100, uh, or sorry, for 20,000 configurations, and we're going to print out the geometry every 100 configurations, print out the energy every 25 to those files, and see how we're doing every two seconds. So for example, if I do shift enter and run the program, just like in molecular dynamics, it's going to give me a status update every now and then about how far along it's going. So this looks like it's going to take uh, several minutes at this rate. So the meat of what's going on inside there is down in this simulate.py module down in the uh, mmlib directory below this molecular mechanics structure. And there is a molecular or Monte Carlo class somewhere, if I don't skip by it. Yep, Monte Carlo uh, derived class there. And the meat of what's going on there is in this run function. So what's going on there? So we kind of do all this stuff. And for all of these iterations, we randomly displace them, uh, displace the coordinates, get the new energy, compare the delta E, do the Boltzmann factor, see if it's bigger than a random number, and then uh, accept or reject it based off those, and then continue uh, outputting things as we go. So the output for that, the energies, uh, similar file as the molecular dynamics kind of structure, input parameters repeated again, and then let's see, we have, what else here? Yep, all the energy components that get out there. Um, then the structures, configuration 0, 100, etc. XYZ files one after another all the way to the end. Um, that was our input file again. And let's take a look at this structure in VMD. So I have one atom which is color coded in blue, just so you can see that one move around. Maybe we'll zoom in on this a bit. So I have that one color coded atom, so you can see that these get these can move around quite a bit in these uh, simulations. So I'm going to play. And then you'll notice very quickly these start exploring the entire space of the sphere that they're inside. So these, these atoms are moving around fairly quickly, pretty randomly. And this is really efficient for these because there aren't any internal degrees of freedom. Uh, this simulation method works very poorly for things with bonds, angles, torsions, because I didn't write it in a way that's smart and has you know, translation, separation, uh, vibrations, and rotations all separated. So for something like a monatomic gas, it works really well. But for something like uh, ethane or formaldehyde, you'll see those simulations, it does a pretty poor job of exploring the space. So computational chemistry is all about picking the right tool for the right job. And if you pick a, an appropriate algorithm, you often get to have your results uh, done with fairly low effort. And if you pick the wrong algorithm, you often get painfully slow results, which are not meaningful. So that is the uh, mandate for why we much, must choose carefully the appropriate tool, simulation tool, for uh, the appropriate situation.